Okay, welcome everybody. This is the Make Sure You're at the Right Place Appointments Advisory Committee meeting uh, for July. And welcome to everybody that I can see and those that I can't see. And the first thing I wanted to do is make our um, ethics announcement. Members of the committee are hereby advised of their duty under the State Government Ethics Act to avoid conflicts of interest and the appearance of conflict and are instructed to refrain from participating in any matter coming before this committee with respect to which there's a conflict of interest or appearance of conflict. Does anybody have a conflict that they want to note at this time? All right, seeing none, I just ask that if one arises during the meeting, you let us know by either virtually uh, raising your hand or commenting. All right, our first um, item of business is to approve the minutes of the meeting that we had on April 16th, 2020, and they were with your materials. So I will look for a motion on that. I would adopt the minutes. Okay, so we have a motion to adopt the moment minutes and a second. Any comments? I have an edit, one small edit. Um, Alexander's <coughs> name is I R B I N Z. Could you hear that, Alice? Uh, just barely, Dorothy. You say um, Irving Joyner. We misspelled his first name. Yes, it should be a Z on the end of his name. Oh, okay. It, instead of Irvin, it's Irving. Got it. Yeah. I think it's right in other places. So I'm sure right. sorry about that error. Thank you. And with that small edit. Um, We'll go ahead and vote. And if everybody knows how, I think it's just easier if you can vote yes with using your little yes button there. If you approve, no, if you don't. Where's my button? It's if you if you're looking for it's in the participants tab. Uh, on the bottom there you have choices of yes, no, raise hand. Go faster, go slower. Thank you, Peter. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, as we move forward to the appointments that we have, um, this has been nicely organized for us. And just as a reminder, when you look through that, we have a general list of lawyers who've expressed an interest in being appointed to any of the positions. And then we have lawyers or other non-lawyers that have expressed interest for specific positions and their resumes and information in the, in the materials. So the first that we have is the Board of Legal Specialization. And there are three appointments to be made for three-year term. And in this case, all three um, of the current members whose terms are up are eligible for reappointment. This would include Laura Hudson, who's a public member from Raleigh, Nancy Ray, who's a lawyer that is not a specialist in Greenville, and Jan Pritchett, who is a lawyer from Greensboro. So I will entertain, um, and, and just to, to note for you that the Board of Legal Specialization supports the reappointment of all three board members. And I assume when they do that, they usually have talked to them and they've indicated that they're interested in being reappointed. That's correct. So I would entertain a motion either as to all three together or we can take it separately, whatever is the preference of whoever makes the motion. I move that we reappoint all three of those current members. Okay, so Dorothy has made a motion that all three of those be reappointed for another term. Is there a second to that motion? Catherine, Catherine Fry has her hand up. Was that just a second? Okay. All right. There's been a motion and a second. Thank you. Any discussion on this matter? Okay. Then let's vote. And again, we will use our voting button. All in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Okay. All right. Motion passes. Thank you so much. And also on the Board of Legal Specialization, it is up to us to um, 
appoint a chair and vice chair of that board. And Larry Rockamora is the current chair and Kim Coward of Cashiers is the current vice chair. They are both eligible to be reappointed and the Board of Legal Specialization supports the reappointments of Mr. Rockamora as the chair and Kim Coward as vice chair. So again, I'll entertain a motion um, to either look, do those together or separately. Move they be reappointed, both of them. Okay, so we have a motion that they be reappointed to their current positions. Second? Second. Motion and a second. All in, anybody have any discussion? All right, all in favor of vote, please. Okay, thank you. That motion passed. All right, then our next item is the IOLTA board. There's three appointments to be made each for a three year term. Okay, so we have um, Anita Brown Graham. Her term is expiring. She is eligible for reappointment. So let's just go ahead um, on that one. IELTA board recommends the reappointment of Ms. Brown Graham. Do I have a motion with respect to her term? This is Gordon Brown. I uh, move that she be reappointed. Thank you, Gordon. And, and she's she's not a relation, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we have a motion that she be reappointed. Did I hear a second? Yes. All right. Any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? Vote yes, those opposed, vote no. All right, the motion passes, thanks. Okay, um, two of the trustees are not eligible for reappointment, so there's two terms to be filled. One is Betty Quick, and the other is um, Sydney Eagles not eligible for reappointment. So the IOLTA board has sent a letter recommending that the appointment of Judge John Arrowwood and of John Keene, and their resumes and information were in your material. Um, so, and, and it's just pointed out for your information that at least six of the nine board members have to be lawyers, and at present they are all lawyers, John Keene is a um, banker and brings some experience in that field. So again, we can go with what the IELTSA board has recommended or we can, we're free to choose somebody else. So I will entertain a motion or discussion. Make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation of the IOLTA board. So, Darren, your motion would be to appoint Judge John Arrowwood and John King. Correct. Okay. Second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. All right, that passes. Okay, um, we also need to appoint the board's chair and vice chair. Okay, and the IOLTA board recommends that Maria Missy, who is currently vice chair, they recommend that she be appointed as chair and Judge Jane Harper be appointed as vice chair. Do you have any motion with respect to those appointments? I move we accept both of those appointments. Okay, we have a motion that we accept that. Maria Missy is chair. Oh, and we have a second. And Judge Jane Harper is vice chair. All right, any discussion on that? Okay, then please vote yes or no. All right, thank you, that motion passes. Um, okay, and then we also have, we don't have an appointment. There is 
an appointment to be made to the North Carolina Dispute Resolution Commission. And this is an appointment that's to be made by the president, so Colin will get to make it. Um, but he is kind of looking to this committee to just indicate to him what our, what our preference would be. Um, and it points out there for our information that you need, his appointments are to be practicing attorneys who are not certified as mediators, one of whom is a family law specialist. So Barbara Morgenstern is the family law specialist on there. Her term hasn't expired. So then he seeks the guidance of the committee on the other appointment. Um, Charlotte Wood is eligible for reappointment and the Dispute Resolution Commission did recently send a letter in of support for her reappointment, so she's been very hard working on that. So I'm not sure whether we need a motion. Um, maybe we could make one just to recommend to Colin what, who we would appoint or just give him some guidance in a discussion. I appreciate that. I just thought it would be good since um, it, the person coming on um, uh, the term was going to expire. I, I didn't know Ms. Wood, and I just thought if um, if there was any anyone that knew her or knew anything about this, or if there was any recommendation, I just wanted to open it up to the appointments advisory committee before we did that to see if there was any comment about her. And I, I just appreciate the guidance. I don't know her. I think the the letter, you know, carries a lot of weight with me, which came in fairly recently, I think, right. from the commission, because you certainly, it's good to know that they feel like she's very hard working on there. And, and I'm I'm very comfortable with doing that, but I just thought since I didn't know her and, and since that the purpose of this committee is to give advice about them, I just thought I would seek their advice. If we don't have any, then I sort of default would be to, to reappoint Ms. Wood, just based on their recommendation. Okay. Anybody have anything further to add? Give guidance one way or the other? If, if not, then it would be my intention to reappoint Ms. Wood to the Dispute Resolution Commission. Okay. Right. Again, we don't need to take any official steps. No, I think it's an action item. Yeah, thank you. So we have several upcoming appointments to be made at the October meeting. Um, and one thing that I've asked Alice to do is to maybe in our synopsis of this meeting to just include a little brief description of the function of each of those boards. I know that after our last meeting, someone contacted me that had actually watched the meeting and was um, interested in upcoming appointments. And I'm thinking everybody may not know what NC LEAP is or what the Judicial Standards Commission does. So she's going to just try to put a little information about that. Um, and again, for it, for all of us to look through the resumes that we have and to think about people that might be good at filling those positions. Any other matters to come before this committee? You know, uh, in the past, we've had some indication, I thought, um, of whether there were... Um, appointments to be made, upcoming appointments, and who whether there are folks eligible to be reappointed or not. That would be helpful to know if we have any sort of open slots. Mm -hmm. uh, that would help us kind of gauge in because the vast majority of these appointments uh, are folks are reappointed when they're eligible for reappointment. Um, and so that would give us an idea of uh, targeting new individuals for these open slots. All right. If, if, so, uh, Alice, can you just send us that sometime prior to the next meeting? Yeah, we can definitely do that. I think the synopsis um, that we publish after each quarterly meeting actually indicates how many are reappointments and how many are open appointments. But we can definitely, and we can make that a part of this presentation to the Appointments Advisory Committee for the um, October meeting. So you'll have that information. Right, because there, I agree with Darren. Um, you hate to go out and solicit folks when there is virtually, 
you know, very little chance that they're going to be appointed. So. That's correct. Colin, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, the other thing I was thinking about is um, if it's not a lot of trouble, it might be nice sometimes to to look when we do have vacancies or, or even just reappointments to look at the, the makeup of some of those boards to make sure that we're getting people from across the state and mm -hmm. some some age diversity uh, too. I mean, it's, uh, we need to get some younger lawyers in. We, sometimes we we overlook the newly wed for the nearly dead and, and don't... <laughs> Uh, it's just great to have some fresh ideas from some of those folks. Yeah, uh, Colin, that's a little more difficult for us to get at. Um, we have been in, in, in under behind each tab for this agenda is a list of the current board members, and we've been tracking the um, sex and race diversity. Um, right. Yeah, I guess you know we could use bar numbers um, that might give us some yeah. clue as to uh it's not always entirely accurate but um might give us some clue and then and then we always put the location there yeah. where people are from so you'll know what part of state the state they're from and lots lots of times we'll uh, somebody in the group will know this person will know their okay. relative age or those kind of things so yeah just anything that might help us kind of look at who's there and try to be sensitive to some of those issues Carthy. Um, I had a question uh, for you, Alice. Um, I figured you'd be the one to, to know, as I say all the time, because you are just all knowing. Um, the Disciplinary Hearing Commission, I know those last appointments that we made last term began on July 1. How do those folks get information or who should they expect to get information from about when they should start or who they should hear from and all of that? Right, so uh, we sent them letters of appointment right after the appointments were made. Um, at that point, we didn't know whether we were gonna have a July meeting or not. And it, typically at the July meeting, they have a training session for DHC members, but that was canceled along with the, you know, the in-person aspects of this meeting. And the chair decided not to have that training this year. And frankly, the DHC has not been holding any proceedings. Uh, the chair had the DHC on hold, much like the courts have been on hold. Okay. Um, but in recognition of the fact that we're, we're probably gonna be in this current situation far longer than any of us originally anticipated, the chair has recently kind of unfrozen everything and said, okay, we're gonna proceed with proceedings um, in as safe as way as we can. So we're gonna start having some hearings at the State Bar Building. And so those folks, the new folks to the DHC will get activated. And I'm sure Catherine's got a plan for giving them training and background. And that, so I'll defer to her on that. Okay. I just um, was contacted by Professor Dorner um, and he was wondering, like he said he hadn't heard anything. And he was wondering, I, I just didn't have an answer for him. Yeah, so I, apologies for that. It's really been because everything's been kind of on hold, but Catherine can speak to what the plan is. Okay. You're on mute, Catherine. You're muted. Sorry. Thank you for that, Alice. Just muted myself. There you go. Okay. Ordinarily, we would have a um, an orientation lunch, and that is something that is scheduled by Don Prentice. Um, we obviously haven't done that, and we haven't been holding any hearings. So I can certainly undertake to do an orientation of him just one on one. We haven't been able to follow our normal procedure in so i'll need to talk with, with don and find out what how he would like for me to proceed okay i wasn't suggesting that he said he needed a one-on-one -on -one or anything like that he just made it seem as if he hadn't heard anything and he thought maybe he was out of the loop in some way or had missed something so i'll make sure to communicate we have a faculty meeting um later and i'll make sure to communicate that with him Okay, I'll talk with Don and see how he would like for me to go about doing an orientation or if he wants to do it himself. Usually he's sort of the the leader on that, but I'm happy to do it if he would like for me to. So okay. I'll talk with him. Thank you both for that info. Well, Dorothy, it sounds like he should have gotten a letter of appointment, so at least make sure he's gotten that. He did receive that. Okay, good. All right. Any other items of business or discussion? Okay, then I have a motion to adjourn. 
Someone raise your Move, hand. we adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.